blood group terminology, and the other blood groups. Blood groups and terminology. A blood group system is one or more antigens produced at alleles at a single gene locus or loci so closely linked that crossing over does not occur or is very rare. Most blood group alleles are inherited in a codominant manner and express the corresponding antigens when present. There can be silent or amorphic genes. These alleles exist that make no antigen. Other than the O gene, most of these are rare. When a paired chromosome carries the same silent allele, a null phenotype can result. Some blood group systems have regulator or modifying genes which alter antigen expression. These are not necessarily located at the same loci as the blood group genes they affect and may segregate independently. Although gene and antigen names seem confusing at first, certain conventions are followed when writing alleles, antigens, and phenotypes. Genes are written in italics or underlined when italices are not available, and when handwriting the allele number or letter is always superscript. Antigen names are written in regular type without italics or underlining. Some antigens have numbers or subscript letters. A phenotype is a description of which antigens are present on an individual's red blood cells and simply indicates the results of serological tests on those red cells. It is important to use the superscripts, subscripts, and italicies appropriately. See the example next to each in the slide below. How the phenotype is written depends on the antigen nomenclature and whether letters or numbers are used. For letter antigens, a plus sign or a minus sign written on the same line as the antigen is used to designate that the antigen is present or absent. Antibodies are described by their antigen notation with the prefix anti, including a hyphen before the antigen symbol. In 1980, ISBT formed a working party on terminology for red cell surface antigen. This enables communication on computer systems, each antigen given a six digit number with the first three digits identifying the system, collection or series, and the second three digits identifying the antigen. There are 30 blood group systems to date. Collections are antigens that have a biochemical, serological, or genetic relationship, but do not meet the criteria for a system. Antigens classified as a collection are assigned a 200 number. All remaining red cell antigens that are not associated with a system or collection are cataloged into the 700 series of low prevalence antigens or the 901 series of high prevalence antigens. We won't be discussing these. We discussed the precursor substances for ABO, H, SE, and Lewis. Type 1 is in secretions and would make the H, A, B, or Lewis antigens. The type 2 is made into the H, A, and B antigens on the red blood cells. Remember, Lewis antigens absorb to the red blood cells after they are produced. The P blood group, currently in ISBT, nomenclature P1 is assigned to the P blood group system. Number 003, P is the globicide blood group system, number 028. Two common phenotypes in the P blood group system are P1 and P2. The phenotypes Antigens and antibodies associated with the P blood group are summarized in Table 8-9 in your book. A person with the P1 phenotype will have P1, P, and PK antigens present on their cells. A person with the P2 phenotype has P and PK antigens but lack the P1 antigen. Anti-P1 can be made by people with the P2 phenotype. 
this antigen is resistant to enzymes. It deteriorates with storage and the P null or little p is found in the Ohio Amish population. So if we have someone with anti-P1, you can use something called hydatid cis fluid to neutralize the antibody. And this will, you, will allow you to detect if there are other antibodies that are present. The P substance is found in hydatid cis fluid and will neutralize anti-P1. Hydatid disease is a parasitic infection by a tapeworm of the genus Echinococcus. This tapeworm is not endemic to the United States. The anti-P1 can be common, naturally occurring IgM antibody in the sera of P1 negative individuals. The antibody is typically a weak, cold reactive saline agglutinin, optimally reactive at four degrees Celsius and not seen in routine testing. Hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn and hemolytic transfusion reactions are not seen with cold reacting antibodies. Examples of anti-P1 antibodies that react at room temperature below 37 can be considered clinically insignificant. The antigens are poorly developed on fetal cells. The P1 PK gene is found on chromosome 22 and the P gene is found on chromosome 3, so they are inherited independently. The anti P P1 PK can cause spontaneous abortion due to hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn. The naturally occurring anti P1 can be seen with bird handlers and people with bovine liver fluke disease. The allo anti P can cause hemolytic transfusion reactions. The auto anti P is associated with proxismal cold hemoglobinuria. Intestinal infections with Shigella, dysentery, or E. coli can also be associated. The I system or number 027 in ISBT. There can be cold agglutinins found in the serum of normal individuals and in patients with acquired hemolytic anemia due to the system. There are two antigens, which are big I and little I. These are not alleles or different genes. The big I is a branched carbohydrate, while little I is a linear carbohydrate. Antibodies to big I or little I are enhanced by enzyme treatment. Remember, these are not alleles. The little i is converted to big I antigens. The little i is higher at birth and big I is not detectable at birth. The anti-big I is a common autoantibody that can be found in virtually all sera. Although testing at 4 degrees Celsius in the refrigerator or against enzyme treated red cells may be required to detect the reactivity. The production of auto anti big I may be stimulated by microorganisms carrying I like antigens on their surface, as in patients with M. pneumoniae. Anti big I is not associated with hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn. This is usually benign because it doesn't cause problems. To avoid detecting these antibodies and prevent them from interfering with the detection of clinically significant antibodies, we would skip the immediate spin testing and only read after we have incubated at 37 degrees Celsius. Pathogenic autoanti big I, the type associated with cold agglutinin syndrome, typically consists of strong IgM agglutinins with higher titers and a broad thermal range of reactivity reacting up to 32 degrees Celsius. When peripheral circulation cools in response to low ambient temperatures, these antibodies attach in vivo and cause autoagglutination and peripheral vascular occlusions or hemolytic anemia. So these people must live in warmer climates to avoid this. The antibody to little i is an autoantibody and not an alloantibody. There can be I antigens on white blood cells and platelets. 
the big eye and little eye in fluids is not controlled by the same genes. So what is in the fluids may not match what is on the cells. Antibodies can form that will react with antigens that are made up of parts of multiple antigens that sit next to each other. So these antigen, there's two antigens next to each other and you create an antibody where, the, where they meet. Um, the auto anti big eye is associated with M pneumoniae and auto anti little eye is associated with infectious mononucleosis. There are 46 antigens in the MNS system, making it almost equal to RH in size and complexity. The antigens we normally look at in this system are M and N, which are located on glycophorin A. These antigens are destroyed by enzyme treatment. Therefore, antibodies to this system will not react with an enzyme-treated panel cell. The prevalence of the common M and S phenotypes are listed in Table 8-12 in the book. The big S and little s antigens are located on a smaller glycoprotein called glycoform B. The antigens are closer to the cell surface and not as easily degraded as the M and N or glyco on the glycoforin A. So you still wouldn't want to um, make decisions on any testing with enzyme-treated um, cells for the S antibodies. The M and N antigen differ at the one and five amino acid position. The M antigen has a serine and glycine, while the N antigen has a leucine and a glutamic acid. The big S has methionine, while the little s has threonine. The anti-M antibody is usually naturally occurring saline to gluten and reacting below 37 degrees Celsius. It is IgM, does not bind complement. It is non-reactive with enzyme-treated cells, and it shows dosage. It is not usually clinically significant and occur due to bacterial infection. Anti-N is a cold reactive IgM or IgG saline to glutenin that does not bind, complement, or react with enzyme-treated red blood cells. It also it exhibits dosage. It's not clinically significant unless it reacts at 37 degrees Celsius. People on dialysis can make an anti-NF, which rea reacts to N-positive cells which have been treated with formaldehyde and it is not clinically significant. Both anti-big S and anti-little s are IgG. They react at 37 degrees Celsius and they anti-human globulin test. They do not bind complement. They may or may not react with enzyme-treated cells. They do so show dosage and these can cause hemolytic transfusion reactions. This means that they are clinically significant. When cells lack both glycophorin A and B, this is a rare phenotype, so it will lack all of the MNS system antigens. U negative lacks the portion closest to the membrane on glycophorin B, so no S or little s antigens will be present. ENA negative individuals lack glycophorin A and do not express M or N antigens. The MK phenotype lacks all MNS antigens and glycophorin A and glycophorin B, making it the null phenotype. Antibodies to antigens other than M, N, big S, or little s are rarely encountered and can usually be grouped into two categories, those directed against high prevalence antigens an anti-U is against a high prevalence antigen and can cause hemolytic transfusion reactions and hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn that are fatal. Family may have to donate to find compatible units or the rare donor database should be consulted. Second are those against low prevalence antigens. If you have an antibody to a low prevalence antigen, you're you transfuse cross-match compatible cells 
and you aren't likely to even detect these most of the time. Units are easy to find if you have an antibody against a low prevalence antigen. The Kell blood group system consists of 32 high prevalence and low prevalence antigens. This is ISBT006. The allelic pairs are big K and little k, KPA and KPB, and JSA and JSB. The high prevalence means most people have the antigens. These are little k, KPB, and JSB. The low prevalence means most people do not have the antigens. These are big K, KPA, JSA. There is a KX is the only antigen uh, in the kx kel associated system. Excluding ABO, K is rated second only to D in immunogenicity. Most anti-big K appear to be induced by pregnancy or transfusion. Antibodies to little K antigens are seldom encountered because most people have the little K antigen. If big K is considered a low prevalence antigen, would it be difficult to find blood for a patient with anti-big K? The answer is no. It would not be difficult since most cells do not have big K on them. The KPA and KPC are low prevalence mutations of their high prevalence partner KPB. The prevalence of KPA suppresses other KEL antigens, so presence of low prevalence antigens may suppress the high incidence antigens, little k, and JSB. If you notice, the first antigens in the pairs is the low prevalence antigen and the second is the high prevalence one. The KEL, NOL, or K0 red cells are JSA negative, JSB negative. The antibodies to the big K antigen. Outside of the ABO and RH antibodies, anti-big K is the most common antibody seen in the blood bank. This antibody reacts in the AHG phase and causes severe hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn and hemolytic transfusion reactions since it is an IgG antibody and the antigens are well developed on fetal cells. Blood selected for transfusion must be negative for the antigen but you should be easy to, it should be easy to find. The antibody to big K can result in extravascular hemolysis of antigen positive cells. Usually we can test the titer of antibodies to help predict the severity of hemolytic disease of the fetus in newborn, but not for this antibody. If the mother makes anti big K, we can test the father to determine if the baby has a chance to inherit the antigen. But since we don't always know who the father is, this could be a problem. Normally now, it's easier for us to test uh, the baby's antigens or, or the genes of the baby uh, by taking a sample of amniocentesis. And this will tell us positively if the baby can, will be affected. When antibodies are made to low prevalence antigens, it is easy to find compatible blood, but there are these are rare because so few people are exposed to these antigens. They can cause hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn and transfusion reactions when present. Antibodies to high prevalence antigens are rare since most people have these antigens and will not make antibodies. It will be nearly impossible to find compatible blood for people with antibodies to high frequency antigens. People who have these antibodies should donate blood autologously for themselves and participate in a rare donor program. It would be very difficult to find compatible blood. These people are rare. The Kell antigens are glycoprotein and span the cell membrane once. The KX antigen is covalently linked to the KEL antigens. If a person is KX negative, this is known as the McLeod phenotype. The KEL gene is on chromosome 7, 
the KX gene is independent of the Cal gene and is located on the X chromosome. Being on the X chromosome, KX is X-linked. The K0 phenotype and anti-KU, the Kel null phenotype lacks all Kel antigens and makes an anti-KU antibody when exposed to normal Kel cells. This antibody is clinically significant and causes both HDFN and hemolytic transfusion reactions. People with the myeloid phenotype may appear to be uh, Kel negative, and but they will actually uh, demonstrate weak expression of little k, KPB, and JSB by absorption elution methods. It is X-linked, associated with hemolytic anemia and red cell acanthocyte morphology. The myeloid phenotype will have a variety of muscle and nerve disorders with acanthocytes. KX is not only on red cells and obviously when missing causes cell membrane instability. That's why you get the acanth. The myeloid phenotype is associated with the rare phenotypes of chronic granulatomatous disease where neutrophils can't make NADH oxidase and the child will die at a young age of overwhelming infection. Not all people with CGD have myeloid phenotype. The XK gene resides on the X chromosome and near deletion of the gene can be associated with chronic granulatomatous disease, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, and retinitis pigmentosa. Females will be myeloid carriers. Each cell has two X chromosomes in women, but one will shut off in a cell. It isn't the same in every cell, so some of their cells will be myeloid while others will express XK. Generally speaking, the antigens with the most importance in routine blood bank serology are Duffy A and B. The antigens of the Duffy blood group system are Duffy A, Duffy B in whites, and for blacks, many will have FY the genotype of someone who is Duffy A negative, B negative is FY, FY. Red blood cells that are Duffy A negative, B negative are resistant to infection uh, by the monkey malaria organism Plasmodium nolsi. Red blood cells are also resistant to infection by Plasmodium vivax, which causes malaria in humans. And this is why many people from Africa will be of this type because you'd be able to pass those genes on because you would survive malaria. Duffy antigens are found on fetal cells. They're well developed at birth and have a wide range of differences in the races. Anti-Duffy A is a common antibody and is found as a single specificity or in a mixture of antibodies. It is not as frequent as anti-Big K. Anti-Duffy A occurs three times less frequently than anti-Big K. Anti-Duffy B is 20 times less common than anti-Duffy A and often occurs in combination with other antibodies. Antibodies to the Duffy system antigens are usually IgG class and react best at the antiglobulin phase. Because anti-Duffy A and anti-Duffy B do not react with enzyme-treated cells, this is a helpful technique when multiple antibodies are present. Some antibodies will display dosage and react more weakly with heterozygous cells. Anti-Duffy A and anti-Duffy B are associated with acute and delayed hemolytic transfusion reactions. Anti-Duffy A and anti-Duffy B are associated with a mild to severe hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn. Duffy antigens reside on a glycoprotein that is predicted to transverse the cell membrane seven times and has two predicted disulfide bridges. The Duffy glycoprotein is a member of the superfamily of the chemokine receptors and therefore will bind to pro-inflammatory cytokines. The Fy locus 
on the long term of chromosome one is syntenic to the Rh locus, which is located near the tip of the short arm. That is, they are on the same chromosome, but they are far enough apart that they don't display linkage. And serologically, they appear to segregate independently. The KID system is designated by the symbol JK or 009 by the ISBT. The KID blood group is a simple and straightforward system consisting of only three antigens. These antigens are JKA, JKB, and JK3, a high prevalence antigen, which is on all cells that have either of the other two antigens. There are notable differences in the antigen frequency among various races. 91% of black and 77% of whites are JKA positive. 57% of blacks and 28% of whites are JKB negative. The kit antigens are well developed on the red cells of neonates and have been found on fetal cells. Although this early development of kid antigens contributed to the potential for hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn, anti-JKA and anti-JKB are only rarely responsible for severe hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn. The antigens are not very immunogenic. The antigens are not denatured by enzymes and enzyme treatment generally enhances reactivity. The antibodies to the main kid antigens have a notorious reputation in blood bank as they demonstrate dosage, are often weak, and are found in combination with other antibodies, all of which makes them difficult to detect. The kid antigens are IgG and AHG reactive. They can be induced due to pregnancy and transfusion. To rule out an anti-JKA, we use a JKA positive B negative cell and to rule out an anti-JKB, we use a JKA negative B positive cell. These are cells that are homozygous for the given gene, so they get a double dose of those antigens. Do not use a cell that is JKA positive B positive as a rule out cell. To ensure that anti-sera can indeed detect weak expressions of the antigen, use a JKA positive B positive cell as a positive control for anti-sera, as it will be a weaker positive. If someone has an antibody, you must do a um, type specific and cross match um, compatible units uh, must be given um, and you use commercial antisera to determine if they have the corresponding antigens. So if you have anti-JKA, you would want to make sure that the unit does not have JKA antigens on the cells and then you would do a cross match and make sure that the, the serum does not react with the antigen negative cells. Kid antibody reactivity can be enhanced by using LIS or PEG or by using four drops of serum instead of two or by using enzymes such as Fisin or Papain. In vitro hemolysis can sometimes be observed with enzyme treated red blood cells if serum is tested. Antigen dose may influence this hemolytic activity. Many examples of kid antibodies bind complement. Rare examples are detected only by the complement that they bind. Serum testing and using polyspecific reagent with both anti-IgG and anti-complement can be helpful in these situations. The kid antibody titer declines quickly in vivo. A strong reacting antibody may show no reactivity only a short time later. The kid antigens are urea transporters. The gene is located on chromosome 18. The JKA negative B negative phenotype lacks all three antigens. These cells will resist lysis with two molar urea. These can be both a recessive or dominant inheritance. The Lutheran system has 19 antigens. These are mainly high prevalence antigens. 
the Lutheran A is a low incidence antigen and Lutheran B is a high incidence antigen. Hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn is rare and mild. The antibody is resistant to enzymes. The anti-Lutheran A is an IgM naturally occurring antibody and anti-Lutheran B is an IgG antibody induced by pregnancy or transfusion and will shorten the survival of transfused cells. There is a Lutheran A negative B negative phenotype that can be caused by a dominant gene, recessive genes, or a recessive X-linked inhibitor. These people can make an anti-Lutheran 3, which reacts with all cells other than the Lutheran A negative B negative phenotypes. But again, this would be rare. Although there are many antigens that people may develop antibodies to, there are only a few that are seen very often. Some antibodies that are usually not clinically significant, but are seen fairly often, are antibodies to M, P, and I. The common clinical significant antibodies include those to the Rh antigens and those to big K, big S, little s, Duffy A, Duffy B, Kid A, and Kid B antigens. Antibodies that react in the antiglobulin phase are considered clinically significant, while those that react only at room temperature are not usually a problem other than, of course, the antibodies to A and B and D antigens. Not all antibody problems are easily solved and some panel reactions can be inconclusive. Silent, regulator, and inhibitor genes can affect antigen expression. Resolution of antibody problems involving the unusual specificities may require the assistance of an immunohematology reference laboratory. I included the additional antigens in the PowerPoint on eLearn, but they are hidden in this presentation. You can read more about them in Chapter 8, or you can learn more on the Blood Bank Guy website, which has many useful videos. Thank you for listening.